What's up, everybody? It's Young Cure with a Metal Gear Online 3 news update. The following information comes from Metal Gear Online's official website, which has been updated with a bunch of new information regarding its game modes, stages, classes, and more. Let's begin by taking a look at the game modes, also known as missions. First up, we have Bounty Hunter, which is basically Team Deathmatch. The text says the following. Teams win if the number of enemy team tickets is reduced to zero. Killing or fultoning an enemy reduces the enemy team tickets by one. Fultoning an enemy increases your team's ticket total by the value of the fultoned enemy's bounty. And if you look down here, you will find an explanation of the game mode's various interface elements. On the top left, you will find a mini-map. To the right of that are the number of remaining tickets for both your team and the enemy team. Below that is your bounty value. As explained by Sean Eyestone in MGO3's TGS 2015 demo, fultoning someone with high bounty points will allow you to add these to your team's ticket count. And of course, if your enemy fultons you, your bounty points will be added to their ticket count. Players gain bounty points when they kill lots of enemies. So basically, you become a more valuable and sought-after target the more you kill. So that's the basics of Bounty Hunter. Next up is Cloak and Dagger. The website describes this game mode as follows. Attackers win by recovering the data disk and uploading it at the evac point within the time limit. Defenders win by preventing the upload. Attackers are armed with only non-lethal weapons while defenders only have lethal weapons. This is an elimination mission. Once eliminated, you cannot return to the battlefield until the next round. So it looks like this is basically a retouched version of MGO2's Team Sneaking, which is very cool. At the bottom here, the interface elements of this game are explained, which are fairly straightforward. Last but not least, we have Comm Control. The description states the following. Attackers must capture comm links to download confidential intel. If the attackers complete the download within the time limit, they are victorious. If the defenders are able to prevent this within the time limit, they are victorious. Comm links can be captured by staying within the effective range of the comm links until they change ownership. Those who've played lots of modern first-person shooters should be relatively familiar with this game mode. From the looks of it, there will be three comm links to capture in each match. So that sums up the game modes. Next up, let's take a look at some stages. First up is Jade Forest, an African jungle outback composed of a natural jungle and a desolate village. Here are some screenshots of the map. Next up is Red Fortress, a Soviet military base in Afghanistan featuring a hilltop base with a peripheral view of the surrounding desert. Here are some screenshots of this map. Then we have Grey Rampart, a stage that takes place in a dam featuring two regions on either side of a river, with a dam and bridges connecting them. Here is what this map looks like. Next, we have Amber Station, a gas refinery on a harbor containing several multi-level structures. Here are some screenshots of it.
Last but not least, we have Black Sight, which is Camp Omega nine years later. So it looks like we do get to revisit Camp Omega after all, just not in the way we expected. According to the description, it features a multi-level base with mostly flat and spacious surrounding areas. Here are some screenshots of it. Alright, let's move on to classes. I'd recommend watching the latest MGO3 gameplay demo from TGS 2015 if you want an in-depth look at how each works. So here's what the website has to say about them, starting with the Scout class. With advanced scouting capabilities, the Recon class specialties are long-range combat and support functions. Movement speed and strength are average, making this a great choice for beginners. We then have the Enforcer class, which is described as follows. With great strength, the Heavy class specializes in powerful weapons. However, movement speed is slow, making this class less effective in close quarters. This class is for intermediate players. Finally, we have the Infiltrator class, which is described as follows. Fast moving, the Infiltration class specialty is close combat, such as CQC. Due to the strength being low, you should avoid a head-on battle. This is a class for experienced players. Fairly self-explanatory, I don't think I need to elaborate further, so let's finish this video off with tips that the website offers. First up are unique characters, which are explained as follows. When unique character is selected in mission settings, one player on each team is assigned at random to play a unique character. Unique characters such as Snake and Ocelot have significantly higher abilities compared to regular player characters. They also have exclusive weapons and actions, providing opportunities to try different playstyles. If you'd like to see the two unique characters unveiled thus far, Snake and Ocelot, in action, be sure to watch the TGS 2015 gameplay demo I posted recently. Next up is abilities. According to the website, equipping abilities enhance performance of your character or your weapons, with each ability having three levels. So, perks, basically. My assumption is that you can unlock these abilities, level them up, and switch them out in a manner that tailors to your playstyle. Then we have Buddy. The description states that players can join up with a Buddy. When your Buddy gauge reaches 50% or greater, you can respawn at your Buddy's location. Once the Buddy gauge reaches 100%, you can equip the ERB wormhole generator from your support weapons. This device can be placed and entered to instantaneously travel to your buddy's location. This was also shown extensively in the TGS 2015 gameplay demo. Next up is Interrogation. According to the description, restraining an enemy with CQC and holding the call button performs an interrogation. If the interrogation is successful, you can gain intel on the enemy team's location, which is automatically shared with your buddy. Now, Sean Eyestone does say in his commentary that this intel will be shared with the rest of your team, not just the buddy you're linked up with, so I'm not sure which is right. Moving on, we have weight and mobility. The description says that weapons and items have weight associated with them. Based on total weight, your mobility rating changes from level S to D, affecting your movement speed and weapon sway. When editing your loadouts, keep the mobility rating in mind. So it looks like there is a bit of consequence for using really large weapons like rocket launchers, which is good to see. Then we have Party. The description states that if you join a party, you will be able to join the same match as the party members. You can access the party menu from the free play environment. There is also a notice below saying that this feature is only available for PS4 and Xbox One. Last but not least, we have Experience Points. The description states that based on your performance during a match, you gain experience points. Earn experience points to raise your character level. If you raise your level, you can obtain new weapons or abilities as a reward. So the game does indeed feature a leveling and progression system. And that pretty much sums up all the information provided about MGO3 in the official website. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to let us know in the comments below what you think about MGO3 thus far. And to be further updated on all things Metal Gear, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.